after he changed the automotive industry in Germany, he thought, let's go into the global telco industry. And it's, it's fascinating what Hakan has built already in the short period of time. Thank Here you. we go. All right. Thanks, everyone. I think, first and foremost, one applause for Marco for organizing this for all of us again. Everybody got the COVID hit, but people running conferences. So, Marco, thank you very much. This feels like coming back to Noah. It's also a great trick. Now you applaud it, and I can cut it in a way that if it was for me. Thank you. Um, growing telco with a fintech playbook. What does it mean? Um, what we do and what I will talk about today. We do more than consumers and data roaming. We're an enterprise telco. I could talk about zero touch, zero trust, cybersecurity solutions. I could talk about compliance. I could talk about IoT. I could talk about software vendor, how we serve 55 other telcos with our software stack. But we only have 10 minutes. So I'll focus on consumer and um, what do we want to solve. And I think the real problem is that we are all fine with. Why is it so easy to join a Wi-Fi and so hard to join a telco network? Yeah? If I go to a cafe, if I go to a friend at home and I say, hey, what's your Wi-Fi? Or if I buy a new device and I want to add it to my Wi-Fi, it might be a speaker. Um, or if I want to get on my new iPad or my kids' devices. Today, it's very natural to us. You have a password, you have a QR code, and you just join. In telco, and even I had that case recently because I forgot my physical sims uh, at home. I was abroad. I needed something for a router. And I literally had to line up, go to a store, bring in my IDs. Two of them were closed. So why do we still accept that there's such a media breach? And actually, there doesn't have to be. So if you scan this code, unlock your phone, open the camera app, you get an eSIM in your connector. You can do it now. It's not root if you want. You can try it. Um, and I'll keep this space with the code on. I call it display marketing on stage. So um, what happens when you click this is you can do it with iOS, you can do it with Android, and within less than a minute, you'll just have a new SIM card. And that's how technology should be. And Max is sitting here. The great example that I always give is this is actually what happened with banking. Yeah. When we founded Auto One in 2012, you always need a credit card for AdWords, for domains, anything. And then you go, you went to your brick and mortar bank and they said, fill this form, we need to check your credit. And you're like, no, 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 I don't need credit, just give me a card. I need it as a means of payment. I just want to be connected to the payment network if you want. And then they said, yeah, well, we'll process it two weeks here, then there is a provider who will send you a plastic card. And uh, perhaps two weeks later, you get the pin, and we have all these processes. So it was the same mindset of, let's fit the customer in how we want to run the business. And then disruptors like N26 came and said, no, 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 no. That's not how the user thinks. Yeah? They want it immediately. Sunday night, 3 AM, I need a new virtual MasterCard. I want to do this. I want to shop online, add it to my Apple Pay. So that's the mindset that disrupted the whole banking industry. I want my account now. I want this IBAN. So, and the banks then had to adapt. When you go today, every Main Street bank will offer you or try to offer you what the neobanks do. And um, it's really, really interesting. So what are we if we are not a neobank? Are we a neotelco? What does it actually mean? A full MVNO is a telco that actually runs their own core network, runs the whole tech stack, issues their own SIM cards, has their own phone number ranges, has their own bilateral agreements to roam. So you have everything except the cell towers. And you might say, oh, wow, but isn't that really important? We don't have cell towers. It's like, yes, in a sense, but on a global scale, BT has RANs in one country and roams in 194 countries. I have no RANs and run in 195 countries. So when you think about in a global scale, everybody is a Roma abroad. Every telco is a Roma abroad, especially the big national ones. So then it's really about tech and assets and licenses. And the incumbents are not really trying to go out internationally because they are the local heroes, right? So we have a footprint where we have full MVNO license in nine countries. We have ECS license in 37 countries which is important if you want to serve or help people serve people in other companies. 
Um, we terminate our own voice, we terminate our own SMS, we have our agreements, but the most important thing that makes us faster is best-in-class API, so you can just make an API call, get a SIM card, get people connected. And we own our own eSIM server, which means we can sign and certificate and, and send you an eSIM to your phone. Um, which surprisingly, speaking about the old world, nearly no telco in the world has. So why not? Very simple. They didn't start yesterday, they started 20 years ago. So you already have a SIM card vendor, just that they send you plastic SIM cards. And now Apple came and pushed eSIM, and they went to the same vendors and said, hey, can you also give us eSIMs? Of course they can. It's a growth segment, it's a digital segment. But it's the same processes. It's like Deutsche Bank ordering my physical SIM, uh, credit card. Now the telco is ordering a physical SIM or an eSIM with the same CSV file, with the same configurations on it, and with not that agility. So what we bring is for our partners and for our own product is compliance, because this is a highly regulated market. You know, you're not selling online games. There's one dirty secret of the industry uh, that I will reveal as an outsider. There's a lot of breakage in those plans. Yeah? You can think about 30 to 40%. If you have a portfolio of a million people who buy 10 gigabyte plans, guess what? They don't land exactly on 10 gigabytes. Now, why is this important? It's not, if you don't have a technology partner who passes this through, you get priced out of the market. And many people are still in the game of, I'll sell you a bundle for X and you mark it up Y and I keep the whole profit for myself. And that's not the partnership approach we think about. We need to enable you on our rails to offer a product that is competitive. And if we keep breakage for ourselves, you will never be competitive in the marketplace. Um, you need to have scale, obviously. You need to be able to offer um, uh, your APIs on a heavy, heavy, heavy load uh, and need to issue, I don't know, 100 SIM cards a second. Um, you need to own the whole process, as I said, and you need to run your own core network. Why is this important? Think about you connect the device, you have an eSIM, and now you want to think about, I have a management app for this. Yeah? I open my Neobank app and I want to actually buy a plan. Now guess what, if you need internet to buy internet, you're already lost. Why, when do people need data roaming? When they land. Oh wow. I, I want to connect, what do I do? So that's where you need to be able to zero rate the traffic. But if you're just reselling and repackaging and not really running the full stack, you have no influence on what happens with that data. You have no influence on where is this terminated. If you fly to New York and you're a customer of a German telco, your traffic goes back to Kassel before it hits the internet. It's not a great experience, it's high latency, you want to do video calls, we terminate the traffic in New York because we have a data center there. We have a more global approach. We have a data center in Hong Kong. We have one in Sydney. We have two in Europe. So it's about what are people focused on, and we are, if you want, so obsessed with offering a global product. You can add cybersecurity. Yeah, you can do pass-through. You can integrate uh, the vendors that you know and just say, hey, I want an extra layer before my phone hits the internet. You can build your own plans. Do you want to have a plan that has Norway and Fiji Islands included? We can build it for you. It's your audience, it's your people. And then, as I said, multi-country breakout, that's the latency game. So if you want to offer a connectivity product to your customers, there are four questions to ask your supplier. Who's actually the telco of record? What am I doing here regulation-wise? What am I selling here? Um, who owns the eSIM server is a trick, trick question. There are only four telcos in the world that own the eSIM server. We're one of them, two in India, one in Saudi Arabia, so very likely you won't uh, get the right answer. Who runs the core network? And the last one, obviously, who gets to keep the breakage. So what we do is we can do full API and you never see us, give it to your tech, or full white label, you don't have to do anything, show a code and you can start selling. Um, we do payments for you, we file the VAT for you, we do everything. 
And um, that attracts two different kind of partners. You've seen three in the press lately. Um, Revolut, which I think have done a beautiful in-app integration. You've seen NordVPN that have launched a new app in the segment and said, we want to go all in on eSIM and data. And then Freenet, that is an incumbent telco that says, how can we love the product? We love the ease of use. Uh, we want to have this for our customers and help them save money. So this is a slide for the VCs. It says, how about adding profitable 50 million to your top line? If you have the audience, this can be huge. So in all the board meetings, they will now say, call this Hakan guy. He's talked about something, additional revenues. Just the right answer. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Hakan. Thank you.